heading to the box score. It's the final week of the regular oh. season. District tournament play straight ahead, Murph. And, you know, that's the great thing about high school basketball. You can go 26 and 0 during the regular season. People remember what you do in the tournament. That's right. You can go 0 for 26. <laughs> and like you mentioned uh, before we went on the air about Watertown, they weren't real good in the regular season, but they put on quite a show in the postseason. So yeah. you never know what's going to happen when those tournaments roll around. And we'll, we'll have Trey Sanders from Smith County and Kevin Honeycutt from Watertown in uh, interviews just a little bit later. Two teams that Murphy's very familiar with. He's the voice of the Lions and Lionettes now. Grundy County came to Cannon County, and uh, Cannon County girls put a whooping on them. They well, scored 27 in the first quarter and wound up beating Grundy 78-27. Uh, Abilene Teeter with 20, Nora Walkup with 17. Murphy, we thought that Grundy County had not played that hard of a schedule. We, you know, we said, hey, we don't know that much about sure. her. But, but, and, and this is not, I don't think, a knock on Grundy County as much as just how good Cannon County is. Not only did the girls score 27 points, they held Grundy County scoreless. It was 27 to nothing after the first eight minutes. And uh, pretty well established who the team to beat is in District 9 AA. And that was our Huff and Puff trucking game of the week. On DTC Sports, let's go ahead and look at the boys. Uh, they uh, get a 85-58 victory. They had a little bit slip up as we'll see the scores here in a minute when uh, community beats them. But uh, Theo Winters with 22 points now, a member of the 1,000-point club for the Lions. Lucas Phillips with 17. Uh, Grundy County, Sam Parson had 19. Brady Everett with 12. But another big win for the Lions. Locks up the regular season uh, championship uh, for them, just like the girls. And uh, they'll be that number one seed in the District 9 AA tournament down at Cascade. They've played all season long with a target on the back, the boys and the girls both, but with one exception, they've uh, they've answered the call and uh, their fans travel as well as anyone I've ever been associated with. It doesn't really matter where we go. We almost had as many people at Grundy County as Grundy County had, and that's, uh, that's saying quite a bit because that's kind of basketball country up that way on top of the mountain as well. Uh, but it's uh, it's been a real joy uh, to be around those kids. Looking at the Gordonville girls, Sonic McCarthy just scoreboard. Uh, they played Clay County close, lose that one 54 to 48. Uh, then they go to Whitwell on Saturday and break a long losing streak. I don't think Gordonville had won since the Christmas tournament down in Florida. Uh, they get a 62 25 a win over the Lady Tigers. And then they go to uh, Birdstown and uh, lose quite handily, but uh, you know, Peake County, the cream of the crop uh, in the district uh, that Gordonville's in. Pickett County got awfully close to the triple digit mark. I think you said even though the clock was supposed to keep running, it stopped a couple of times to give them a little more time maybe to hit the 100 mark. Of course, that's uh, that, that's Gordonville fans, Teddy, and that may be true. I don't know. <laughs> Let's go ahead and look at the uh, Gordonville uh, girls standings. Uh, of course, we do know Gordonsville is going to be the fifth seed. Red Bowling is going to be uh, the fourth seed. So Red Bowling and Gordonsville will play in the play-in game at Livingston. That'll be on uh, Tuesday, February the 13th at 6 o'clock in Livingston. Uh, so, you know, the loser, their season's over. The winner advances and ensures itself for three more games. They'll play in the semifinals and then in the championship or the semifinals in the Constellation and the first round of the region. So a lot at stake uh, with the Lady Bulldogs and Tigerettes playing uh, in that first game, Murph. Terry, how close were the regular season games between those the two? The game at uh, Red Bull and I think, or at least in the late going, I got to listen to that game, was a pretty close ball game. Uh, and I don't remember the score when they played uh, at Gordonville, but it's a team that Gordonville can match up with, uh, a team they're very familiar with, Tara Pryor, a former Macon County a Tiger Ed. He, she went on to play at Cumberland as their head coach. Uh, so I felt like, you know, I feel like Gordonville, you know, it, it's only one game. You don't have to beat them four out of seven, Murphy. There you go. Two, two out of three or three out of five. You got to beat them one game. So uh, I think Jack Dillard's uh, got his charges ready to do just that. Strange things have a way of happening when the tournament comes around. Don't ask Clark Range because <laughs> Gordonville here yes. two or three years ago yes. uh, knocked Clark Range for the first time ever of them not making the, the uh, region tournament. And that's the only time that Lamar Rogers hadn't done that in 40 plus 
years of coaching in Lamar Rogers just happens to be the state's winningest, all-time winningest coach uh, with over, I think it's over 1,300 victories now. Mm, tough night for him, but yeah. that's what it's all about. Right. Uh, and so Clark Range, they're in that 2-3 matchup. They're going to play Clay County, Pickett County girls have already wrapped up the regular season crown and be the number one seed. They are ranked number three in the state uh, is Brent Smith's uh, Lady Bobcat team. Let's go ahead and look at the Gordonsville boys score. Uh, you know, Mr. Adams came out big for Gordonsville. Uh, at Gordonsville last Friday night, he hit some free throw there. Uh, they're a big post player. I think he's a senior. Uh, he had two free throws, missed the first one, Murph, but made the second one to give Gordonsville. Uh, there was only about a second remaining. Oh give my. Gordonsville a big win over Clay County, 51 to 50. Uh, then Gordonsville goes on Saturday. Uh, doesn't show any effects of that emotional win on Friday night and beats uh, Whitwell 64 to 30. They go to Pickett last night, uh, which we filmed this show on Wednesday. They're up 13 in the first half, but wound up Pickett had a huge third quarter uh, where they uh, came back, took the lead for good, led by four to the Bobcats after the uh, third quarter and wound up winning by eight. But it tells you that Gordonsville, who's probably going to be the number two seed, Pickett the number one seed, it's not out of the realm of possibility that Greg Bibbs Tigers could beat the Bobcats. Tell you what, you never know what's going to happen. And uh, too bad Gordonsville couldn't have borrowed some points from that Whitwell game uh, when they played Pickett County. But I know Pickett County probably will will uh, bring their A game. But it looks like Gordonsville's got a pretty good A game, too, once yep. they get it all together. Last year, Gordonsville lost to Pickett in overtime at Gainsborough in the district <laughs> tournament semifinals. Let's go ahead and look at the uh, boys' standings. Pickett sitting there on top, 7-0. They're the number one seed. Number two seed is going to be Gordonsville. Uh, the number three seed still up in the air a little bit. Clay County is finished. Uh, they're three and five in the district. Red Bowling uh, still has a, a district game left. They're two and five. And then Clark Range is one and six. In all likelihood, Clark Range will be the a number five seed and will either play a Red Bowling or Clay County in that play-in game, uh, which, you know, anytime you talk about a play-in game, Murphy, where the winner advances, the loser goes home, you know, the stakes are high for that. It's amazing with only three nights left in the regular season, how many huge games are scheduled all across the state. Right. Let's go ahead and look at the Cannon County girls that continue to roll under head coach Ashley Patrick to beat the champions of Cascade 78-27, beat Community 48-22, they beat Forest 65-36. Murphy, when you uh, add that up, uh, that's pretty awesome defensively to give up less than 30 points a game on average uh, to those three district opponents. It's amazing, and uh, more times than not, there's generally four girls in double figures. Uh, they, they just play so well together, and uh, th there's not an I among the girls. It's right. all about we, and they're always finding somebody wide open on a fast break for an easy layup, and that's why there's four girls in double figures every night. Girl standings is a cannon on top. They've won the regular season crown, but then they're at two, three, and four, uh, depending on how the rest of the games shake out. Uh, Grundy Community or Cascade uh, could vault anywhere from two to four. Forest is definitely going to be uh, in that five slot at 0 and 7. Let's go ahead and look at the Cannon County boys. Sonic of Carthage scores. Cannon beats Cascade 85 58. You can just take that Monday game off the, off the screen <laughs> right now. That was not a good night. Community uh, comes to Woodbury. Yes. And wins 78 63. Uh, gives kind of the rest of the uh, district maybe some hope. Uh, Cannon beats Forest, then rebounds the next night. Beats them 75 39. Looking at the uh, standings, Cannon is done. They're the number one seed. They're seven and one. But then just like the uh, girls district, two, three, and four still up in the air between Grundy, Community, Cascade, and then Forest is going to be the number five seed. Community is easily the most improved team in that district. Forest only has one win, and that came against Community back right. early in the season. We'll check out our other area schools when we return to the box tour brought to you by Carthage Saveway.
Your trusted friend for all your grocery needs in Smith County is Carthage Safeway, your home-owned and home-operated supermarket. From the delicious USDA steaks in their meat department to the freshest produce around, Carthage Safeway is proud to serve you and your family. Todd and Angela Skurlock and everyone at Carthage Safeway are always there with a friendly smile and a helping hand. Great service, prices, and selection. That's Carthage Safeway, 80 Dixon Springs Highway, Carthage. At DTC, we're proud to provide the communication and entertainment services you need to get the most from today's technology. Get a $50 bill credit when you add or upgrade your internet package with us. Supercharge your video streaming and high performance gaming because we've got you covered. Get the technology you want, backed by local customer service from neighbors you know and trust. DTC Communications, your total communications provider. There are some services that you don't need every single day, but when you do, you need them fast. That's the kind of service that Roto-Rooter provides. Owned by the Watson family, Roto-Rooter is your next licensed trusted plumber with quick and dependable plumbing and drain service for those in DeKalb, Smith, and White Counties. They can do it all and on your schedule. So go ahead and call the plumbing and drain experts of Roto-Rooter today. 615-215-7686. Hello, I'm Bruce Daniel. I've lived in Cannon County all my life. For the last 59 years, I've only made it across the highway. I married my wife, Melody, in 1981. We hauled our first load of freight in 1983 with one truck and a couple old barred trailers. We found a way to make it. Our employees are the backbone of our company. Some of our team members have been with us for more than 30 years. to the box score. Terry Collins along with Murphy Fair. Justin Malden is always doing a great job for us behind the uh, cameras and uh, Murphy when we look at uh, get ready to look at some more scores from our area teams you know coaches right now say I want to be playing my best basketball right now because sure. district tournament team time has started but really regardless of what you do in these last three days of the regular season race all that really matters is what you do in the district, region, sub-state, and state tournament because everybody starts 0-0. That's right. It's what you do tonight, whatever tonight happens to be, right? right. <laughs> That's right. As uh, some, some teams have already clinched region bursts, others are still working for them. If you've got a six-team district, uh, of course, there's a couple of games that are going to be uh, knockout games, and if you've got a five-team, there's going to be one. Let's go ahead and look at the DeKalb Curls Sonica Carthage scores. Uh, Livingston uh, beats DeKalb 56 44, and then a close one that really nobody saw coming. But DeKalb slowed the tempo, uh, lose to Upperman by one, 29 28. Uh, so you've got to give uh, Brandy and her charges some credit. Uh, they come back. Van Branken Girls really did not have a great scoring night for uh, DeKalb, only maybe four or six points between the two of them and they play Livingston close, 43-35. DeKalb's one of those teams that's gonna be scary uh, that, uh, for a matchup, Murphy, in that first round of the district tournament. That Upperman DeKalb game, that's single digit scoring in all four quarters by yeah. both teams. That's, right. uh, that's kind of crazy. I can remember back in the day when Dirk Ash was coaching and I can't remember who they played, but I think they held the ball for 27 minutes. That, ball that would be Gordonsville. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Scott Moore was playing. He had three fouls. It was in the first half, and they put the ball under his uh, under the arm. Jay Baker, Donnie Baker's son, who was the coach at Cardsville, uh, they held it the whole second and third quarter. So uh, anyway, but uh, that was a slow night on the hardwood for sure. <laughs> Let's go ahead and look at the uh, seven AAA girl standings. White County still on top. Uh, they are the uh, number one team in the state. Upman number two. Uh, then you've got Cumberland County, you've got Livingston. It's probably, you know, you say, well, the first four teams, they're a cut above. But when you look at Stone, the only loss, Murphy, for White County in the district was Stone going, I believe it was to Sparta and winning. And then DeKalb plays Upman, the number two team, within a point, and they haven't won a district game all year. So better beware if you're Cumberland County or Livingston, 
if you finish third or fourth, that's not going to be an automatic W in that opening round of the tournament, which is held at Tennessee Tech. Now, one of the, I think one of those five losses that Cannon County girls have was to White County, and it was a pretty close ball game. Yeah, two, two of the losses. Is that right? Okay. Yes. They came back real early in the year. They played them. They did. Both at Sparta and at Woodbury. Let's go ahead and look at the DeKalb boys. Uh, really struggling right now. Um, weren't very competitive in their three losses. They lost to Livingston twice, once by 43, the other one by 26. Uh, and then Upperman beats them by 34. Joey Agee and his team kind of hit the wall. Of course, part of that due to the fact that Jordan Parker, uh, their outstanding guard, uh, is is you know been hurt. I'm not sure when he may or if he will return. Uh, but right now, uh, you know Murphy, it's kind of like a snowball headed downhill, and it's just it's hard momentum. to stop. Yeah, momentum's definitely going against the Tigers. You want teams to peak, but they've got to have some momentum to go with it, don't right. they? They definitely do. Let's go ahead and look at the uh, seven AAA boys standings. Upman sitting there on top at seven and one. Half game back is Stone Memorial at seven and two. Of course, Upperman has two district games. Stone one, White County has one left. Uh, Livingston one left. But it looks like Cumberland County and the Cab going to finish uh, in that five six slot. Uh, and they're going to have to play White County or Livingston. Livingston's already beat uh, DeKalb twice here uh, in the last week. Um, you know, so, you know, regardless, you start 0-0, and, and I know that's what Joey Agee is preaching to his team. You could probably look the whole state over and could count on one hand the number of districts that have four teams with winning records at this stage of the game. That's right. a pretty tough district right there. Right. Let's go ahead and look at the... Uh, Smith County <coughs> girls scores, they go to Hartsville, win at 63-42. Uh, they beat them both times in the regular season. Of course, that could be a team they face later because Trousel's in the corresponding district, 6AA, Smith in 5AA. And then Smith County uh, girls uh, get a tough win over Watertown, 50-42 at Watertown on Tuesday night. Uh, looking at the Watertown girls scores, uh, Watertown, Sonic Carthage scores. Watertown beats Monterey 53-23, and then Smith County beats Watertown 50-42. Looking at the standings, uh, you've got York at 7-0, Smith County at 6-1. A big clash coming in Carthage on Friday night uh, when Smith County, if they beat York, would be cold regular season champions, and then a coin toss would ensue. If Watertown who has already beaten Jackson County at Watertown, can go to Jackson County and win Watertown's third. They'll play Smith County in the semis of the tournament. If Watertown loses to Jackson County in Gainesboro on Friday night, then a coin toss, which will occur Friday at the uh, Cookville Cracker Barrel uh, for the district meeting. So we will know who wins each. Monterey is gonna be number five. So Smith County is locked in no worse than second with their win last night over Watertown. And then Watertown or Jackson's gonna be three, four. Uh, one of those are going to play Monterey for the play-in, but that shouldn't be much of a task, being the fact that Monterey is 0 and 8 and 3 and 20 overall. Terry, I know you've got black and gold in your blood veins, uh, but uh, what do you think about Smith County's chances against York at home? Well, it was a three-point game at uh, Jamestown. Wow. With 7.37 to go in the game, Chloe Collins hits a three. Coach Farrell calls a timeout, and Watertown goes on, not Watertown, excuse me, York, wrong purple team, goes on a 16 2 run to end the game. Oh, dear. Uh, for Smith County to lose 52 35. Uh, they've got a premier play in Roots Beatty, but they had other players that night stepped up. Smith County is really going to elevate their game uh, if they're going to beat York. York has played an extremely tough schedule. They played Cookville uh, and a couple times. They played Gatlinburg Pittman, who's got probably the number one team uh, in Class 2A in the state. Uh, three Division I players are on that team. I saw them play this summer. In fact, I saw them play against Smith County uh, down at Lebanon. They are dynamite, shoot the three extremely well. But when you look at York, with the schedule that they played, Murphy, they've gone into some tough environments. In sure. Morning. And I think that will help them not only in their Friday night game at Carthage, but down the road uh, when they have to play. I mean, they're they're just that good. Wow. Let's go ahead and look at the 
Uh, Smith County boys scores. They beat Trouston County 56-41. It took a miraculous third quarter. Owls go on a 21-3 run in the third quarter uh, to beat Trouston County in Hartsville. And then last night, they beat Watertown by seven. Go ahead and look at the standings for District 5 AA. Everything's kind of cut and dried. Uh, York is one regardless of what they do against Smith County. Uh, Smith County is going to be two or three. If Smith County loses to York and Jackson beats Watertown, then they'll do a coin flip to determine who's two and who's three. It doesn't matter because uh, who's two or three, that they, they play each other in the first round of the tournament. Watertown and Monterey will be in that play-in game uh, on Tuesday night, February the 13th at 7.30 at Gainesboro. We'll have a talk with head coach Trey Sanders of the Smith County Isles when we return as we remind you, you watch in the box score. Brought to you by Carthage Segway. Friendly, traditional banking at its best. It's what our customers have learned to expect at Citizens Bank, and we're always happy to deliver with plenty of options for personal and commercial checking accounts, as well as a variety of loan types. We can help you achieve your financial goals, all with a friendly hometown smile. Citizens Bank at 407 Main Street and 61 Dixon Springs Highway in Carthage, 70 Cookville Highway in South Carthage, and 530 Gordonsville Highway in Gordonsville. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. There are some services that you don't need every single day, but when you do, you need them fast. That's the kind of service that Roto-Rooter provides. Owned by the Watson family, Roto-Rooter is your next licensed trusted plumber with quick and dependable plumbing and drain service for those in DeKalb, Smith, and White Counties. They can do it all and on your schedule. So go ahead and call the plumbing and drain experts of Roto-Rooter today. 615-215-7686. Your trusted friend for all your grocery needs in Smith County is Carthage Safeway, your home-owned and home-operated supermarket. From the delicious USDA steaks in their meat department to the freshest produce around, Carthage Safeway is proud to serve you and your family. Todd and Angela Skurlock and everyone at Carthage Safeway are always there with a friendly smile and a helping hand. Great service, prices, and selection. That's Carthage Safeway, 80 Dixon Springs Highway, Carthage. If you're a commercial driver looking for a company to call home, Huff & Puff Trucking is the company for you. Our employees are professional and dedicated individuals that take pride in what they do. We offer an outstanding pay package with a dispatch structure that maximizes your home time. To learn more about a company that knows you by name and treats you like family, call us at 1-800-965-5033 or visit our website at HuffPuffTrucking.com. Here with Smith County head coach, uh, Trey Sanders. And uh, coach, last night uh, you get a big win at Watertown. You're behind 33-32 with 2.59 to go. You've been up by 11 earlier, uh, but your charges kind of locked down defensively, came up with three steals, uh, held Watertown scoreless for that last 2.59, and you sneak out of there with a 40-33 to victory. And we'll take it. We, <laughs> they, uh, I tell you, they, uh, Coach, Coach Honeycutt, they did a good job of, you know, trying to slow the game down. We kept trying to speed them up. And, and uh, you know, we, we felt like that we left a lot of points off the board by, you know, missing some, some layups and, I mean, just doing free throws as well in the first half to where, you know, where we're up 21-12 at halftime and felt like that we, you know, we, we could have had at least, you know, eight, eight more points. Uh, and uh, and kind of separated a little bit more, but you know, third quarter we come out and, and just come out flat and, and not being able to score. But uh, like you said, defensively, I, I thought we did a, a pretty good job of of, uh, of shutting them down, holding. You know, we, we kept good all in check pretty much, and Reynolds was able to he got in double digits. But other than that, I mean, you know, we I, I felt like we did a pretty good job defensively. Just still our our, our problem a lot of times is just being able to finish and. Uh, easy shots inside. So that's one of the things that we're actually working on today in practice. <laughs> Trey, have you ha had uh, several nail biters this season? Maybe more than average? Well, we, we've had our share of them. Uh, you know, that's, that's one of those things to where uh, 
for me too, I'm, I don't get as excited as I as I used to <laughs> in those games because it's now it's it's, it's uh, one of those things where I've I've kind of learned to take it as it is and and just uh, you know try to try to set us set ourselves up in a position to try to be able to finish off. You know, we we had one had an opportunity at Canning County, uh, a good opportunity in, in that game to to. Uh, to have a shot at the end to win it and win it and you know you know it wound up we, we turned it over but again it's one of the, they're a good team Cannon County is a good team and, and that was a good uh, competition for us to to help us in our district games and and uh, I think that's kind of helped prepare us for those games like the Jackson County game here where Gage Gibbs made a big shot to to tie it and send it to overtime and then you know we were able to uh, uh, to, to win that game and. And, and and even last night's game, you know, with Watertown, you know, like I said, Terry, when we, we got down one, and then then we were able to, you know, kept our composure. We were able to make some shots, and and, and then defensively uh, get get the plays that we had to to secure that win. Coach, when you look, I last night was sitting right beside your bench doing the radio, and two things that you were upset with, and I'm gonna blame Seth Hackett and Jordan Craighead, your assistant <laughs> coaches. The one was at the end of the first quarter where you shoot it too quick, they come back down, you're up eight to two, and they get a three-point play. I heard you in between uh, <laughs> quarters saying, hey, when I say one shot, that's what I mean, not shoot it immediately. Then yeah. you turn around at the yeah. end of the second quarter and and you take the shot too early uh, and wound up giving them another opportunity. They didn't score. But I know that's something in a close game that's even more magnified, Coach. When you get in those situations, you know, they've got to listen to you and what you want, and then they've got to execute it. Um, and luckily last night it didn't cost you, but it could. Oh, it very well could. And, you know, Friday night in a game like that, uh, um, you know, with, with them slowing down the tempo of the game, they weren't pressuring us. Um, you know, so it was one of those things to where uh, we were we were able to go ahead and sit there and let that clock run down to take that last shot. And and again, again, just sometimes you know we I don't know if we see see something we think we need to go ahead and take advantage of it at that point. But you know, with us having that last shot of the quarter and then having possession to start the next quarter, uh, you know, could have been big for us to have been able to come away with two baskets there. So yeah, that's one of those things that we still we try to work on. Uh, in practice, uh, and, and and try to keep ourselves in, in position, just understanding and knowing situations and and the time and, and you know, little things like that. Uh, but like you say, in, in a big game such as uh, this one coming up Friday night with York, uh, that's that's uh, that can be very costly if if, uh, if we don't take advantage of that. Trey, that's going to be an excellent opportunity for you guys going against uh, York Institute. But that, yeah, I mean, even if you win that ball game, I think you're still going to wind up second. Uh, in the district, but I'm very curious to find out where in uh, in uh, early December, where did you see Smith County Owl basketball finishing the regular season? Well, it's, it, you know, we we've, we've talked, all, and it's one of those things that if you, if you talk about it, you know, if you, if you think you can do something, and believe you can do something, you got to talk about it and, and share it with one another, and, and and that's what we've done pretty much all season is that. You know, saying, you know, hey, we're a team that can compete and we're a team that can be uh, at, at the one or the two spot. And so, you know, we felt, you know, we knew coming in that, that it was supposed to be York just kind of pretty much head and shoulders over over everybody. And uh, and everybody else was battling, you know, for the two spot. But, uh, you know, we, we believe that, uh, you know, we could we could battle for that for that one one position. Um, you know, we are going to. You know, be either second, third, depending on what happens with Friday night. Uh, and, and it comes down if we if we went out, we'll be second. Uh, you know, and, and if we were to to get beat, then we would be in a tie with Jackson County. All that does is just come down to pretty much to see who's going to wear what color uniform uh, when we play. But <laughs> but uh, um, that's one of the things that that we've talked about. You know, being able to do and 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 kind of pretty much you know just not worry so much about what all the other teams do. Just control your own destiny and, and take care of your games and, and do what you can do and so uh, uh you know that's that's we, we feel good about where we're at right now um uh you know don't necessarily uh, like the the idea of having to play jackson county at jackson in the tournament with them hosting it but but it's still uh, uh you know we we feel like the, that's still you know we split with them but we didn't play our best ball up there when we played earlier uh this year um, so you know, we're we're just looking forward to looking for the tournament ahead and, and, and uh, just excited for, for the opportunities that are in front of us. Now, do you guys have to go against Chattanooga and Marion and Bledsoe and that group? No, who do you play in the region? We got Liberty. We've Trojans. got the, 
Yeah, Liberty, yeah, Liberty Creek, Creek, Trousdale. White House Heritage. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Trousdale, Westmoreland. Yeah, that's the, the four. When you look, Coach Sanders, at how important, not that that the Friday night game is not important, but the even more important game is a week from Friday when your team plays Jackson County. To the victor of the semifinal game, which will be on Friday night at 7.30 on that February the 16th, the winner of that game gets to host the first round of the region, uh, which would be at Bill Randers Gym at 7 o'clock on that following Saturday. <clears throat> How important is that? Of course, then you could face off against a team you've already seen uh, and beaten twice in Trouster County. How important is it to get a victory? Or do you think, well, hey, we can finish third and we're okay there too? No, you, 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 know, you don't ever really want to put yourself in that situation. If you can naturally, you know, you can get that home game, that means a lot uh, just by having the, the, the home, home, uh, home crowd support. Uh, so you know, for us to be able to go in and, and, and win this, win that game Friday night, uh, and put ourselves in the championship game to get that first round region game is big. Um, that's going to give us an opportunity to be able to uh, you know host that first round game. Um, like you said, yeah, you know we played trials, we played them three times this year and 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 beaten them each time, but still it, it's one of those things to where. Uh, yeah, you're comfortable with that game, and you kind of look at uh, uh, which I've gotten some game film uh, from the other about on the other teams from the other side. Um, so it's one of those things that where I feel like that we can play with all of them. Um, yeah, they've got some size on us um, as, as most teams do, but uh, again, it's 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 uh, you know we're we're pretty comfortable um, thinking that you know really when when at the start of the season everybody was talking everybody was still saying how york was the team even in our region uh now you know liberty creeks come on and, and i think they've surprised uh, a few people and and uh, you know they'll wind up there i think they're in the driver's seat over there right now at the, in the one spot um but still they're they're a very beatable team but you know to answer that question terry yeah you want to you want to have those opportunities to play those games at home and not have to not have to go on the road if you don't have to coach how was your team last night, were they overconfident at all? Uh, they had beaten Watertown by 35 at home. Uh, and then you go over there, and I think the first possession that Watertown had was around two minutes and 15 seconds. So it was evident that Coach Honeycutt wanted to slow the pace, make it a possession for possession game, which really magnifies your turnovers or your missed opportunities. And when I say that, miss free throws and miss layups. Oh yeah, and we had several of them. Uh, but uh, uh, again, I cautioned the guys before you know uh, before we left the gym uh, yesterday afternoon uh, and, and um, huddled when we broke it down at the end. You know, just saying how that this going to be. It, it's uh, it's gotten in t turned into a good rivalry game. Uh, it's an emotional game, uh, and I said, depending, you know, just whatever happened in the previous game, don't count on that happening again. I said because it's at their place. Uh, you know, we've had uh, games with them in the, in the past couple of years in which that, uh, you know, of course, they you know, they beat us in, in the district tournament here, you know, last year, and they went on their run at the end of the season. So, you know, throw the records out the window and, and whatever whatever that is because you, know, you got to come to play. And I told guys then, you know, we've got to be able to make the little plays, and that's something that we've been telling them all season long. You know, just make the little plays. And, and you know, occasionally we do, but uh, in a game like that last night, uh, it, it showed up big and, and it kept uh, it kept them hanging around. And, and, you know, you just don't want teams to be able to hang around with you if you've got that chance to put them away early. You know, go ahead and do that. And, and it's one of those things we have a hard time stepping on the gas and going. So it's, uh, it's uh, one of those things that, again, hopefully we've learned a little bit from, from that last night and that uh, – uh, hopefully that will uh, help to prepare us for for this Friday night and next Friday night's games. Trey, I thought for just a moment we were interviewing a, a coach, the coach from uh, Cannon County, uh, Coach Nave, because uh, he he says the same thing all the time in my interviews with him is, uh, you know, throw the records away, especially when the district tournament comes around, because it's uh, anything can happen and you got to be well prepared, don't you? Oh, that's true. You know, it's, it's a tournament sport and how how you want to make sure you know you'd, you'd like for your record to be as great as it could possibly be uh, going into the tournament but uh, again it, 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 all that really doesn't matter other than just the seeding of the tournament 
Uh, you want to put yourself in the best possible position uh, when that starts. But then after that, uh, you know, just still and looking looking at scores every night um, on, on Coach T, checking the scores and stuff, how that, uh, uh, you know, you see a lot of, of teams with uh, records that aren't so good, you know, playing against teams that have played well all season and, you know, a couple upsets or, or real tight ball games. So, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's coming down towards the end. Everybody's fine-tuning everything and, and, and getting uh, getting their teams in, in their best possible position that they can to, to win those ball games. And so, like I said, it, it really doesn't matter uh, what those records are right now. Well, Coach Trey Sanders, we appreciate you visiting with us. I know you've got York, a team that you played pretty close uh, in Jamestown, and then you've got Jackson County definitely in the district tournament, a team you lost to by 23 at Gainsborough, but turned around and beat them at home 63-58 in overtime. Best of luck. Thank you very much. Appreciate talking to you guys. Slay those dragons. <laughs> <laughs> We've been talking to <laughs> That's right. <laughs> We've been... We've been talking to head coach Trey Sanders of the Smith County Owls. We'll have more of the box score when we return. Brought to you by Carthage Subway. Friendly, traditional banking at its best. It's what our customers have learned to expect at Citizens Bank. And we're always happy to deliver with plenty of options for personal and commercial checking accounts, as well as a variety of loan types. We can help you achieve your financial goals, all with a friendly hometown smile. Citizens Bank at 407 Main Street and 61 Dixon Springs Highway in Carthage, 70 Cookville Highway in South Carthage, and 530 Gordonsville Highway in Gordonsville. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. So, uh, go check it out. Deterring crime. It's the first job of a home security system from DTC Security. For just $49.99, get a system with a touch keypad, three window or door sensors, motion detector, key fob, and standard installation. The time to get started is right now. Let us help protect your home. So? A lot of nice stuff and an alarm. Don't delay. Call DTC Security now or visit us online. Your trusted friend for all your grocery needs in Smith County is Carthage Safeway, your home-owned and home-operated supermarket. From the delicious USDA steaks in their meat department to the freshest produce around, Carthage Safeway is proud to serve you and your family. Todd and Angela Skurlock and everyone at Carthage Safeway are always there with a friendly smile and a helping hand. Great service, prices, and selection. That's Carthage Safeway, 80 Dixon Springs Highway, Carthage. And welcome back to the box score brought to you by Carthage Saveway. We've got Watertown boys head coach Kevin Honeycutt with us. And uh, Coach Honeycutt, last night I know a disappointing loss for you. Uh, your team down got down 11 there uh, in the third quarter, battled back, took a 33-32 lead with 2.59 uh, remaining in the game on two J.J. Goodall free throws. But then you go scoreless uh, the rest of the game. You made three or four turnovers there that were very, very critical. Uh, and wind up losing 40 to 33. Yeah, we, you know, our, our emphasis at the beginning of the game was to try to control the boards because, you know, last time I think they had 18 offensive rebounds and 38 points in the paint. You know, we wanted to slow the game down, make it methodical. When, when JJ stepped to that line and, and we took the lead, you know, I thought we had a chance to win it there uh, just because the momentum was swinging our way. And our guys were playing hard, they were flying around, they were being active, sharing basketball. And, you know, but we talk about ball security all the time, and we talk about it being an individual job. It's not just a team job. It's got to start with you. You catch it, and you get rid of it with two hands, how you dribble the basketball, how you pass it, all that stuff. We talk about it all the time, and, and credit to Smith County because, you know, we got them out of their zone. Uh, you know, they matched up, and when they matched up, Smith County is just so athletic. Uh, they're going to disrupt teams when they match up. Uh, you know, it played in our favor when they matched up a little bit. Uh, we got a couple scores late, but, you know, credit to them just for getting up in us and, and turning us over. Um, you know, we kind of, we went there and went scoreless, uh, and it's happened to us a lot this year because we don't score the ball well at the half court. You know, at Smith County, you don't want to get them running. Uh, you get them running, and, you know, they're capable of putting up big numbers. Um, so I thought it gave us a chance, but, you know, ultimately the ball didn't roll our way. We played a, we played a hard game. You know, we called, called our way back, and, you know, I thought we'd done a good job of that and making Smith County play our style of basketball, and uh, but a credit to Smith County, man, they made some tough shots down the stretch and, and turned us over, and that's, that's credit to them, credit to, to Trey. 
Coach, this is Murphy Fair. I'm, I'm guessing since you all are in a five-team district like uh, – uh, is it, is yeah, it four? Yeah, five. You're right. You're right. Okay. That uh, <laughs> that you all will probably end up playing a play-in game against Monterey, uh, and then that puts you against York. That's kind of a, yeah, we can win that first one, but I don't know about York because they haven't lost yet in the district. Uh, what, are you, what are you doing to try and get your kids ready so that they don't underachieve in that play-in game? Well, I, I think it's uh, I think it's a mentality thing. You know, we talked about it last night. You know, uh, before the game, there was a chance that you know if we would have won last night, that we still had a chance to, to make it a three-way tie for second uh, with Smith and Jackson splitting. Obviously, we would have had to split with Jackson, but you know there was still a shot there, which was something we thought was crazy. And, uh, but our guys, they you know we had a lot of guys last year that were a part of that tournament team and made that run and. You know, and, and they understand that, you know, basketball is about tournament time. It's not always about, you know, the regular season. And, you know, right now, you know, we're trying to keep them rallied for tournament time. Um, you know, and, and our guys last year, you know, we go winless in the district. Um, you know, we get into the tournament and, you know, we, we beat the number one team. So it's not something that we've not done before. Um, you know, we, for, for, I'd say for about three quarters, we were just as good as York when it came to our place. And, of course, you know, we just – we don't play a lot of guys, you know, because we got a lot of freshmen and our legs start to wear and it plays a huge role. And, you know, so I think our guys are, I think they're still, their mentality is still, hey, you know, we still got the tournament and that's what Watertown was about last year. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, that's, I think that's where we're at right now. And, you know, but they understand how hard it is to beat somebody three times. So we've got to mix some things up. Um, you know, but York's, York's tough. They got everybody back from last year besides uh, they lost one kid and, you know, Watt Burger's a handful and, you know, uh, the uh, the other kid, zero is a handful. I mean, they, they got guys that can score it. They got guys that can handle it. They're a tough matchup uh, for us. But, you know, I think we get, we get out of that playing game. And, you know, I think if we can go into feeling good about ourselves, you know, I feel like we got just as good a chance to beat York as anybody else does, at, at, you know, especially during tournament time because anything can happen. Coach, last night you used a very deliberate style. I think it was over two minutes on your first possession when you are trying to beat another team that maybe is taller than you, sometimes slowing that tempo helps you. Of course, there's no shot clock in high school. And I think that was kind of recipe for your postseason run a year ago, getting the tempo like you like it. I know you want to do that against York, and then you'll have to definitely do, do that in the region tournament uh, once you get there because there's so much size uh, in District 6 AA. Yeah, that's, you know, and we we talked about it, you know, about uh, three weeks ago, and we started speeding the game up and running the jump in and flying around and trying to create havoc in the in the backcourt because, you know, we get a half court, we struggle scoring. Even when we get a, you know, we run a really good set, everybody's so long and so athletic that, you know, we really don't have a lot of time to get a shot off. Uh, and we're having to rely on, you know, our guys that are 5'10 to either get fouled or get an inside-out three. And, you know, and we started playing a little faster and it played in our favor. You know, against Monterey, um, but they're not as big as everybody else. But you know, you look at our region, you look at the rest of the district. Everybody's so much bigger than we are. And, you know, in order for us to be competitive in the tournament, we've got to be able to make everybody play at our pace. And I think last night we made Smith County do that, and that's what gave us a shot uh, down the stretch. And you know, I, I think we're capable of doing that. JJ Goodall does a really good job taking care of the basketball for the most part and controlling the tempo. Uh, you know, and, and it's credit to our other guards too because they know uh, they know we're kind of outsized, outmanned a little bit. Uh, but I think they kind of take that on the chin. I think they kind of take it personal. Um, you know, I think they still they know because you know we play Jackson County uh, close at our place, and you know, again we hit a wall, uh, took the lead two or three times, uh, and then same thing with Smith County, take the lead, and we just hit a wall. And we've yet to play four quarters of a basketball. We're still fairly young. Um, but, you know, taking care of the basketball and playing at our pace and our tempo gives us a chance to play uh, and, and not only play, but it gives us a chance to win uh, down the stretch. And I think that's something that we've talked about and we're putting a lot of emphasis on right now, pick and choose when we run, uh, pick and choose when we slow it down. Coach, it sounds to me like conditioning is a big part of your attack if you're having to uh, rely on speed uh, to, to make up for maybe your lack in size. Has that pretty much been your... Uh, philosophy all along or is it just you know you kind of got to do with what you've got well i think it's you know and, and it, you know it's, i've got a you know somebody from watertown that's, that's on my staff brand martin and, 
he was a part of Watertown basketball when uh, you know they had a bunch of guards and just running and jumping because they weren't really good in the half court. And I think that's just Watertown style basketball, man. I think that's something that you know it's just the, not only just the schools bought into, but the community bought into. It's exciting to watch. But our practices, we really didn't start doing any of this until right around uh, right after Christmas because we we realized real quick when teams slowed us down and we didn't get to play at a fast pace that we were going to struggle to score, but. You know, but then vice versa, you know, playing against York and teams like that, you know, we've got to slow it down. But our practices are really high tempo right now. We've been flying around. Our guys are tired. Uh, and it, it, it's credit for those guys because, you know, he and, and Marcus and Dacio and even Crew Coleman, they're playing 32 minutes a night. Um, you know, and there's I don't think there's anybody else in the district that does that. Uh, you know, because everybody's able to rotate guys. And, you know, I, I think our guys are uh, in better shape and more conditioned. Uh, than most kids in our district, if not all of them, just because of how we have to play. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a condition thing. It's a it's a mentality thing. Not only you know it, it's important to be ready physically, but for our guys to be bought in mentally and understand that they can't take plays off. They got to fly around and get stops. Uh, it's a, it's a tough style of basketball to play, especially when you're not very deep. But it's credit to you know all of our guys that are that are doing it and doing it uh, at a competitive rate. Coach, it makes it, makes it extra tough this time of year when you're having to make up games that were either snowed out or iced out, and all of a sudden you're playing three games a week, and, uh, you know, 32 minutes times three, uh, that's a long week. <laughs> yeah, we we actually talked about it last night. You know, we're, we're practicing today. I say we're practicing. We're really going to watch film and take some ice baths, and, and that's something with our athletic trainer, Carl. Carl does a really good job as far as making sure when we get ice baths. We have ice, ice baths Wednesdays is what we call them. Uh, we'll get some therapy with Game Changer or some heat, you know, and try to keep our guys as fresh as possible. Uh, and I think that, you know, we have the advantage that a lot of high schools don't have athletic trainers. A lot of them are getting them now. But, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a thing where we've got to be strategic about how we practice and about how we, you know, get stuff done at practice. You know, you to – uh, all of our shooting drills were high tempo, you know, running up down the floor. And now a lot of our shooting is, is stationary catch and shoot and, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, it's it's even with tomorrow. You know, we've got a game on Friday and Saturday. And, you know, how do you want tomorrow's practice to look like? Do you want it to be up tempo and get back to our style? Or do you want to kind of, you know, let our guys kind of stay off their legs a little bit, talk about scheme, walk through some stuff and get up some game-like shots and, and try to save legs? Uh, you know, it's a double-edged sword and, I guess that's what makes coaching so fun and so interesting because everybody's got their own philosophy. But, you know, that's something that we've got to uh, do a good job of in the next week or so because we don't play a lot of guys right now. Terry, a nice bath doesn't sound real. Uh, no. A lot of fun right now. I have to skip <laughs> practice that day, Coach. <laughs> Going back to my playing days, which is 40 years ago, uh, we did that at Vol State when I played down there in Galton. And I was not a fan of that at all. And I'm sure a lot of your players aren't, aren't either, Coach. <laughs> yeah. But, you know. Yeah, none of, uh, none of our players are, are too fond of it. J.J. Goodall is, but J.J.'s been doing them for a while now. But everybody else, you know, when they hear Ice Bath Wednesday, you know, their nerves get all anxious. Their lips are turning purple in the Ice Bath. <laughs> cause, you know, their anxiety's through the roof. But they understand that there's a, there's a reason behind it. And so they do it, you know, even against their own better judgment. Uh, and it's, you know, those guys, they, they try to do everything that we tell them to do. And, you know, we're fortunate. We got good kids, uh, you know, that buy into what we want. So, you know, for the most part, I uh, can't complain. But no, they're, they're not too happy about it, no. Coach, I've been around some other coaches that say their philosophy is they don't ask their kids to do anything they wouldn't do. Do you or your staff uh, partake in those uh, ice baths as well? <laughs> I have taken, uh, I've taken my share of ice baths. So I take them now. Probably, uh, I, I'm going to say no, because if I was to take an ice bath right now, I'm not sure if my bones could take it. Uh, but, you know, our, our guys, you know, they they know. Uh, but, no, I've, I've taken my fair share of them. But uh, if you're asking me if I take them now, uh, that is a definite no. And neither, neither does Coach Martin. <laughs> Coach, only two more games. Uh, you've got to go to Jackson, and you've got uh, home against Red Bull on Saturday night. And then you can push that magic button that you pushed a year ago or your team went nuts in the postseason. Yeah, it's it's kind of uh, it's kind of come around full circle and I I told our guys for the last two weeks, you know, hey you guys are slowly starting to figure it out, man, and, and I hate that we keep waiting until tournament time, but you know, and I that's the beauty about basketball, you know, everybody makes a tournament, you, everybody gets a shot. 
uh, and from there on out, it's you know it's it's whoever's playing their best basketball and. And, you know, watching everybody else play, I think we've improved a, a lot more than other district opponents uh, for the most part because you see the gap closing for us. Uh, and that's not to say anything negative towards anybody else, but it's credit to our guys. And, you know, that magic button, man, if I had a, if I had one, I'd love to have it in my office and just hit it every year, you know, especially in years like this. It's, you know, it's frustrating as a coach, and I know it's frustrating as a player, but, you know, those guys that were with us last year, man, they understand, and, and, and they every time we talk about it, they're just shaking their head yes, and they're, they're 100% behind it, and they know we're getting better, and it's you got to keep them rallied. That's the biggest thing, keep them uh, with their blinders on and see the you know see the end goal of what we want, and, you know, ultimately we won't be playing where we were playing at last year, and, you know, I think we got a shot at doing it. It's going to be a little tougher, but I think we still got a shot. Well, Coach Kevin Hanicutt of the Watertown Perfect Tigers, best of luck uh, in the postseason. Thank you. And we've been visiting with Coach Honeycutt. We'll have more of the box score when we return. Brought to you by Carthage Safeway. Friendly, traditional banking at its best. It's what our customers have learned to expect at Citizens Bank. And we're always happy to deliver with plenty of options for personal and commercial checking accounts, as well as a variety of loan types. We can help you achieve your financial goals, all with a friendly hometown smile. Citizens Bank at 407 Main Street and 61 Dixon Springs Highway in Carthage, 70 Cookville Highway in South Carthage, and 530 Gordonsville Highway in Gordonsville. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. There are some services that you don't need every single day, but when you do, you need them fast. That's the kind of service that Roto-Rooter provides. Owned by the Watson family, Roto-Rooter is your next licensed trusted plumber with quick and dependable plumbing and drain service for those in DeKalb, Smith, and White Counties. They can do it all and on your schedule. So go ahead and call the plumbing and drain experts of Roto-Rooter today. 615-215-7686. Hello, I'm Bruce Daniel. I've lived in Cannon County all my life. For the last 59 years, I've only made it across the highway. I married my wife, Melody, in 1981. We hauled our first load of freight in 1983 with one truck and a couple old barred trailers. We found a way to make it. Our employees are the backbone of our company. Some of our team members have been with us for more than 30 years. That's right, very close, <laughs> out my back door. That's right, and, and Cannon County is hoping to be just that. Like they were in the regular season, they want to be the tournament champion. That would be fine. Looking at our uh, featured game, it should be an interesting one. Old rivals here used to be in the same district when they were both in single A. Red Bowling Springs, two uh, pretty good teams this year going to Watertown. Uh, you know, when you look at Red Bowling, of course, their former bo uh, girls coach is now their boys coach. And, you know, when you look at Red Bowling and, and Colton Copas and the players they've got on that girls team as well, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, Red Bowling, they, they're looking for a postseason run and Watertown's wanting to get momentum for the postseason. I think if there's one word to identify those two teams, it's familiarity. They played each other a lot for a long time and uh, should be a good crowd for that one, I would hope. Of course, that's our Huff and Puff truck we have the week on DTC Sports. Josh Agee and I will have the call from down in Watertown. Here's the replay dates. Tuesday, February 13th at 7. Then Wednesday, February the 14th on Valentine's Day at 1. And then on Thursday, February 15th at 7. And Saturday, February 17th at 7 o'clock. Let's go ahead and look at the upcoming uh, games for Cannon County. I think the regular season is over for uh, the Lions and Lionettes. And they just got to get ready for the 9AA tournament at Cascade. Uh, they're doing like most teams are doing on Tuesday nights at four or five play-in games. Uh, and then on Thursday nights, the girls semis, the 15th on Friday nights, the boys semis. On Monday the 19th, 
Uh, that's the girls' consolation championships and then boys' consolation championships on the 20th. You don't want to stumble your toe here. If you want to get that number one seed, play the number four seed from District 10A in that first round of the region, which would be in Woodbury. Likely uh, not not Loretta, but that's where the rest of the region will take place. Right. Loretta's girls and boys are both very outstanding teams. Looking at uh, Dustin McKinney, I couldn't think of Dustin's name a minute ago that used to be the Red Bull and Coach, but that's who it is now. And looking at the DeKalb County upcoming schedule, they go to Stone Memorial on Thursday night. Uh, I think they do a lot of those games on Thursday night in selling AAA just to where they can meet on Friday and get everything finalized for the District 7 AA tournament, which is from Tuesday, February 13th to the 20th uh, at Tennessee Tech. And I think they're playing, uh, you know, their games, they'll start with those playing games, which are the four or five girls, four or five boys, three, six girls, three, six uh, boys uh, to start there at Hooper Evelyn Center. Looking ahead at Gordonsville, uh, Gordonsville uh, girls will be playing uh, Clark Range at home on Thursday night. Uh, then on Saturday night, Van Buren County will go to Gordonsville, uh, a game that was uh, moved earlier because of the weather. And then on the 13th, the District 7A tournament at Livingston Academy. We do know that Gordonsville will be playing Red Bowling at six o'clock. Uh, in the opening of the tournament, of course, Gordon Hall is in that 2-3 uh, matchup, uh, which will come, uh, I think they're playing on Friday, February the 16th, uh, will be the Gordon Hall boys. So, a lot of hit, a lot at stake for Gordon Hall, a couple more games this week uh, before starting district tournament play. Exciting time for everybody involved. Can't wait for it myself. Let's look at Smith County's upcoming games. Of course, they've only got York left. Of course, York and Smith County, both games in Jamestown was close in the early stages of the fourth quarter uh, before the Dragons and Dragonettes pulled away. And then the District 5 AA tournament at Jackson County. Uh, we do know that the York boys will be the number one seed if York girls beat Smith County, or if Smith County beats York and then York wins the coin toss, then York girls will be the number one seed. We know uh, that Smith County boys will be the number two seed. They're gonna play at 7.30 on that Friday night, uh, February the 16th. And if Smith County girls were to finish uh, in that two, three games, they would play on Thursday night at 7.30 at Jackson County High School in Gainesboro. Of course, those brackets will be finalized after all the games are done on Friday night. There's two district games on Friday night in 5AA. That is Watertown going to Jackson County and Smith County hosting York. Monterey is finished. So looking at the upcoming games for the Watertown uh, Purple Tigers, uh, they're going to be uh, playing at Jackson, as we told you, on Friday, February the 9th. They'll turn right around and play at home on senior night for, uh, and they'll host Red Bull and Springs, a game you can see right here on DT6 Sports. And then you've got the tournament uh, at Jackson County uh, in Gainesboro. Quite an historic, a nostalgic gym uh, that's been there for a long time. Or a great setting for high school basketball. Well, you can almost guarantee there's going to be an upset or two in that. That's uh, There's some pretty good teams uh, pitted against, against each other in that, and I'm very anxious to see the results of that when all the smoke clears. We want to thank Justin Malden and uh, Murphy Fair, and I'm Terry Collins. Turning time right down the road here uh, starting next week. As we remind you, you're watching the box score brought to you by Carthage Sagway.